anything off. Um, I am Nathan P. Butler. This is my YouTube channel. Lots of Star Wars content here, but I also do PlayStation VR Let's Plays, uh, particularly whenever I get a new game, or at least a game that is new to me, as in this case, uh, and give you a chance to see what it's like, my thoughts on it as I play, at least initially, sort of a first impression or second impression type of thing, so that you might decide whether or not that game is for you, if you have a PSVR, or whether PSVR itself is for you. Um, so, as I mentioned in some streams yesterday, uh, basically I wound up getting my hands on a Thrustmaster T80 racing wheel, which does not have force feedback, but does come with the pedals for gas and brake. Um, wound up getting that for only 30 bucks on clearance at Target. And that has sort of opened up a new vista here because I was able to use that to play Dirt Rally, which is something I'd had for a while. And it was intriguing enough and fun enough playing that uh, and such an immersive experience that I was like, you know what? I'm going to look for Drive Club. I think Drive Club's only dropped down to about 20 bucks or something like that. Surely it's worth the 20 bucks, even though my first impressions of the demo from the PSVR demo disc weren't all that impressive. Um, wound up finding a copy, yes, as I thought, for 20 bucks at Best Buy. So now I'm going to be playing a little bit here of Drive Club to give you my impressions using the T80 racing wheel. Um, so yes, I have jumped into a game that at first I thought, nope, not going to happen. And I'll be honest here, if you take a look around, I mean, you can tell this is a VR game and not regular drive club, right? The, the graphical fidelity, even on a PlayStation 4 Pro, is nowhere near the fidelity that you would see on regular drive club. That said... A lot of the initial motion sickness type issues that I had, or simulation sickness type issues I had when playing the demo, which also made the fact that it was so kind of grainy and mushy in terms of the graphics as you get at a distance, um, those two things kind of combine to make it kind of a meh experience for me. I find that when I'm using the T80 racing wheel, because it feels so natural, there isn't that sense of simulation sickness. So that seems to have gone well. I've done the one... Uh, initial race that they just kind of throw you into before they even show you the main menu. Now I'm at the point of being able to actually jump in from the main menu. So we've got the drive option, challenges that we can do. Um, we can create a club, which is almost like a clan, if you want to call it that, but for a racing game. Uh, join one that already exists. Uh, we have settings we can check out here in a moment. Uh, you can view replays of previous um, games, previous races. You have a profile that gets set up and kind of keeps track of your progress, and you've got your garage. From a garage standpoint, which is probably what you're most interested in right now for a driving game, we of course have all the different vehicles that have various unlocks, right? So, I've got the uh, hot hatch right now, uh, the mini John Cooper Works GP, got one Volkswagen Beetle, hey look everybody, it's Bumblebee! And the one that kind of intrigues me, um, the EX1 concept car here. For any of these, you have the ability to select the car and choose essentially what type of paint job you want and so forth, club, custom, and so on and so on um, by choosing different customizations. Okay. Uh, we can also, if we want, take a look at the vehicle itself from the outside. You get a chance to do this before races. So I have the ability to essentially turn it and raise it up or down. So if I want to look specifically, say, at the tire or something or the rear or whatever, I can do that. I can look around the edges here. You know, it's, it's kind of circular and click square to jump to that spot if I want to look at it from a different angle. And I have, in this case, three different things showing up here that let me jump into the vehicle. So, for instance, I can jump in here. Right, gives me that passenger view. I can jump right here, which is my driving view. Or jump back out, okay, to be able to be outside the vehicle again. Okay, and when I do so, I do have the ability to open and close the door. And that door is insane. I... The concept vehicles are always the ones that I'm intrigued by, because they're always just a little bit weird. Okay. Um, and, of course, you've got your information off to the side. Acceleration, top speed, handling, drifting, and so forth. How much fame you've earned using that one. I have not driven this one yet. Um, and so on. Right. And it's a fair selection here. Most of which are unlocked by your... Um, driver level, but there are some that are unlocked at club levels. So you're going to want to make sure that you are in... Um, a club 
at some point. I have not joined one yet, but I will in the near future. Alright, so then, among your settings, aside from audio and controls, let me show you what the controls are for the wheel. Okay, so you do have a wireless controller set, uh, set up, but you also have the wheel. You can change your rotation angle, you can change force feedback strength if you have it, uh, whether there's wheel assist or not, whether there's vibration or not, again, if it has vibration. Um, set up the button configuration. Okay, so in this case, uh, what I'm playing with, okay, again, is a T80, so it's a racing wheel, but um, my, uh, for lack of a better term, um, my uh, paddles, okay, so if I'm holding on to it at, say, uh, 10 and 2 or 9 and 3, my four fingers can reach forward, and there are paddles on the back of the steering wheel that I can click towards me. Okay, so that's what it means when it says paddle here for gear up and gear down. Uh, handbrake is the circle button. Those buttons are located essentially if your hands, again, are at uh, 9 and 3, then they're going to be under your right thumb. You do also have uh, a D-pad under your left thumb in the same position. Your R2 and uh, R3 buttons. It's R3. It's R2 or R1. Um, but the other R buttons uh, are at, essentially if your hands are at uh, 10 and 2, they're right near your thumbs. Uh, on the wheel itself, as opposed to on one of the uh, cross parts. And you get the same thing for the L's on the other side. And so on. Okay. So, yeah. Let me back out of here. Alright. And we got our various gameplay and display settings and whatnot. Audio. You do have a character that you can customize. I haven't yet. Not sure that I really care. Oh my god, it's Sulu! Hell, that's more me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second, are you telling me this game requires you to be cisgender? Son of a bitch. Sorry, a little political humor there. Um, I don't really care. Okay. Um, helmet shape. Ooh. Again, I'm not sure that I care enough, but nifty nonetheless. And there is a social hub that you can jump into. Save! Alright, so. Your Drive Club career is measured in fame. Even more by racing, or earn more by racing cleanly, drafting, or overtaking opponents, and driving as fast as you can. Stay on the track to avoid collisions and help maximize your fame earnings. So at the tour, we have single event, random event, and multiplayer. Yes, online multiplayer. Let's do a single event. Face-offs are optional mini challenges set by your friends and players worldwide. They can be found on every track. Be face-offs to earn more fame. You'll hit, or you'll need to hit average speed targets, perfect tricky corners, and more. And a race, a time trial, a sprint, drift, or cruise. I'll go ahead and do race. I'm sure I'll suck because this is only the second one I'll ever have done. But it really feels nice and uh, uh, smooth. And the menus feel more crisp, I gotta admit, because, again, because they're 2D, of course, right? Floating in front of my face. But they do feel uh, crisper and cleaner than the, um, the bulk of the background. I mean, the background doesn't feel quite as, as grainy, I guess, as it was on the demo. It's just that it almost feels like I've, I've gone outside and... You know, maybe I'm 10 years younger and have taken off my glasses. Um, it's just a little bit softer. Um, nothing feels quite crisp. Like, I look at the tree, and for instance, the branches that are closest to me on this right-hand tree don't look so much like tree branches. It almost looks like green cauliflower, right? So it, it's, it's there, and it's recognizable, but it's just not super, super crisp. Um, and I know with VR, that's kind of a given, but uh, this is a bit less crisp than even some of the other um, PSVR games when played on the Pro with the helmet. So, just to say it, uh, HMD. We have Japan, Norway, Scotland. I don't know. Let's just try O Canada. We have that Kayosh Point or Kayush Point. Oh, okay. Ooh, we can drive in Vancouver and, like, look for where they're making movies or something. Time of day. 
Let's go random. Cloud cover, clear, cloudy, random. Let's go random, random. All right, event settings, don't care for right now. And play. Okay, so. All right. Nice. Eh? I raced this in honor of Pablo Hidalgo. Uh, other Star Wars fans are like, <laughs> other people are like, who the hell is Pablo Hidalgo? Where's that one that I unlocked? Or is it not available for this one? No, all right, let me go back. Well, it should be on here. Should it not? There it is. Yeah, I want to try that sucker out. Uh, I just want to select it. Play. Yes, this one. Okay, there we go. All right. We have our race here. Three laps, seven opponents, semi-pro difficulty. Time of day is four o'clock, or I guess that's, what, four in the morning? Because it's not in military time. Um, but I'm assuming that's four in the morning. Cloud cover. And again, you get a chance to look at your vehicle before you get into it. All righty. And change viewpoint. So I'm able to look at it from, again, the different angles here. And I can just cycle through. Okay. Now what I did find was that I did have to keep sort of recentering myself because what was tending to happen on the first time I was running it was it was almost like I just started slouching in my seat. Right? It was like the, uh, the, the dash and everything kept rising up and it was hard to see over it sometimes whenever I was trying to drive, which was weird. Okay. So we can adjust... Once we're choosing to start, now this is the first time you choose to start. If you try to restart a race, your settings stay the same, so keep that in mind. But I can adjust my view up and down. I tend to prefer sitting a little bit higher. Um, I can adjust the view forward and backwards, right, for where the, the fits most normally. Um, and I can calibrate my view, again, by holding options, which just sort of fits it where it's thinking itself it has the sweet spot. All right, so, again, notice... I mean, I look around, I look around, I look around, I see a lot of new faces. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's there. It's not super, super realistic looking, but it's, you know, it's sort of a, a good enough, good enough to give you a nice VR driving experience, but I got a feeling it's not going to be till we get to Gran Turismo's new release that's going to really have a truly crisp visual experience. Even Dirt Rally VR isn't super crisp, but it's certainly more crisp looking than this. All right, let's do this. Woo! Whoa! And I did not have to do much in the way of calibrating my wheel. I'm not entirely sure if that is because I had already calibrated it when playing Dirt Rally, or more likely that it's just a better fit the way that this game's default settings work. Oh, shit! Didn't say I was a good driver. He said I was playing a driving game. That's perhaps different. I'm not quite used yet to using both pedals when using the racing control because I don't have it bolted to the floor or anything. So it's like I'm using my left foot to hold it down and my right foot to do the gas, but that- Whoa! Shit! Reset to track. Damn it. That means that my uh, left foot, because it's holding it down, isn't using the brake, so I'm not riding the brake or anything. I'm using just the one- Damn. 
just using the one hand, or one hand, one foot. I'm not really making use very often of the handbrake because of the, just the awkwardness based on where I place my hand. I've got them at 10 and 2. That circle button would be easier for me to hit if I was at 9 and 3, basically. Get the hell out of my way. I want to try to do some of the face buttons and change views. All right, there we go. So there's a new view. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. Man, my driving sucks whenever I'm in that view compared to normal. Holy shit. Well, that's kind of neat. No vehicle view. And then back inside. Huh. Not bad. Then after each one, it'll give you the results. Hey, you suck. Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, I want to try that again. Eh, I'll try it again. I doubt it's going to be any better. Having a little bit of trouble cornering with this one. <laughs> a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a hell of a lot. Let's see if I can use them brakes this time a little bit better, huh? When I'm not in a sharp turn, I, it feels very natural. When I get into a sharp turn, it feels a little odd. Ugh. You do have your stats up there at the top. You can cycle through them, as you can see here, to have it show different things up at the top, like the actual uh, uh, map of the track. But to see them, you got to kind of look up. And I'm not just talking putting your eyes up. You need to actually sort of look up entirely, which is tricky. Get out of my way! Ah, shit! Ah, I cannot make that turn for shit. And my feet keep pushing my pedals further and further away from my body. So I'm having to kind of scooch down in my chair to make sure I can still hit the- Oh, shit! What the fuck was that? I just barely, barely tapped it to the right and went sprawling. So there goes this race. What the fuck? Get the... God damn it. Reset, go. Yep, I'm screwed. Fuck. Eight out of eight. Because of one screw-up. They just fouled up the rest of it. So it's definitely a racing game. One fuck up and you're screwed. Yep, yep, that's a racing game. Maybe I need to be using the handbrake on that turn. Holy shit. <laughs> Sixth. One more than last time. Screwed up my freaking pedals. Unlocked an Audi A1 Quattro. Unlocked a W motor like in Hypersport. Ooh. All right. And your menu screens are all kind of that 2D kind of thing. I try to get to get a feel for a vehicle. Time trials about seeing who's the fastest uh, for a lap or from point to point, and so on. Norway. Get this birdie. Wanna try this same vehicle again? 
Mm, yeah, because I'm almost to the point of being able to level up or whatever you'd call it. Hey, use this paint job and it won't look so bad whenever you keep running into shit. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, holy crap. It is nighttime. That is both awesome <laughs> and worrisome at the same time. Wow. You think I'm gonna wreck? Oh yeah. Plenty of times. Man, I can't even see the rest of the car. This is where a dome light comes in, but this doesn't have a dome. Why oh, you can't see squat? Oh, it is nice though. You look up and you can see the stars. Nice skybox going on there. Side of the mountain or hill. Huh. Okay. Cool. Ready? Go! Car sounds like a damn rocket. Oh. I have to get used to drifting on this one because I'm not doing it particularly well. Try not to run into anything. I said it, it starts to feel very natural. Like you don't, the learning curve is more about how the vehicles turn and how they corner, less than just getting used to the controls. Because the controls are incredibly intuitive. I mean, it's friggin' pedals and a wheel. Again, it's the Thrustmaster T80 that I'm using, and you can get that if you're in. I mean, if you're. Oh, damn it! Shit! If your target is anything like mine. You may wind up seeing these on clearance still. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's like I have no... On a sharp turn, I just cannot control it for nothing yet. But that's not the wheel, that's me. Because I'm just not used to playing racing games um, that have you, A, inside the... the uh, vehicle as opposed to up above it, um, but B, using an actual racing wheel instead of using a um, standard controller. It's fun though, I mean it's a very intuitive control scheme. It does not feel, oh I'm not getting, oh, oh shit, I'm not getting any mo, fucking, I'm overcorrecting, son of a bitch. It doesn't feel, um, I'm not getting hit by the simulation sickness that I would tend to get hit by. Gonna hit them all! No, overcorrect, overcorrect it again, overcorrect it again. Yeah! You overcorrect once and it becomes like fucking bumper cars. I'm intrigued by that VR carts game, but I have no idea whether it can use the wheel and I'm backwards. And it's not going to let me reset yet. Come on, let me fucking reset. There we go. You have to reset manually or it'll count you down, but resetting manually, you have to be at a complete stop apparently. That's nice. 
right? Leaves and stuff up in your face. It's going by fast enough that the fact that it's not super, super crisp isn't terrible. I mean, oh! Ugh. It's certainly better looking than, say, the, the luge or whatever it is on uh, PSVR Worlds. Well, okay. Let's see if I can... I'm going to switch vehicles here. And see if the handling that I'm running into is just because I suck, which is quite possible. Or if the handling I'm running into is partly because of the vehicle itself. Because I didn't have nearly that much trouble the first race that I ran. Um, so let's see. Let's do... I'll do a time trial again. Go back to Norway. Go back to that same one. Go back to random random, except this time I'm going to choose a different vehicle. Yeah, lower top speeds, higher handling. Let's do the Beetle. I love Volkswagen Bugs. Let's go with straight up Bumblebee. Alright. Open says me. Oh yeah. Passenger side. Nice. Nice. And the driver's side. Well, okay then. Oh, I was hoping I could just close the door. Nope. They're okay. Oh, they changed time of day, too. Oh, that's neat. Instead of having it in front of my face, it's on the little dash here. Oh, I'm so short. This is my uh, Chinese grandfather driving. There we go. Now I raise it up and it'll be more like when I'm driving my wife is like, Man, you're too short. Raise that shit up. Okay. Oh, I like that view. Nice. I like that off to the side there. And the rear view mirrors. Nice. Now I won't be going nearly as fast. The top speed. Not bad. This is that same track, by the way. It's just different conditions and different uh, time of day. Now, I saw you could do cloudy or clear. I don't know if you can actually have, like, rain effects and stuff like that on this one. You can on a dirt rally. That's with that VR um, add-on. Which they now sell as a bundle. Which is how I got it. Alright, yeah. Yeah, this feels much better than the other one. So that was more of a car issue than it was a control issue or, you know, and there, there was a degree of player issue because I'm not used to driving that type of vehicle in a driving game. So probably if I was playing with the sticks, I probably would have been running into walls and crap with that too. Like that. And when I'm overcorrecting here, I'm not bouncing off of walls. I do like being able to just kind of flick my eye out of my peripheral vision and see the path ahead as opposed to looking upwards. Yeah, perhaps I should not have chosen that other car as the one to first jump in really with once I had a choice. Oh, smack. You have a new score. Ah, I love the way the lighting works inside there. Very nice. 
And I wonder if this is enhanced for PS for PS4 uh, Pro. If so, it doesn't seem like it's very enhanced, but it makes me wonder. I'll have to look it up. All right. Yes, that was much better. Very cool. And again, it's just... <laughs> graphically, when you look here, I mean, just to stop, I mean, this looks like something you would see... Uh, I'm not even sure I would call it a PS3 type thing you would see. Um, it looks like it's some kind of step between PS2 and PS3 to some degree when it comes to things like textures and whatnot, but it is fully VR around you. Like, I can look back at the house behind me and the fence and everything behind me. Um, and the car interiors look nice. It's just not the prettiest driving game you're going to see on PSVR. But it is um, enjoyable. I actually think that this, just from a sheer enjoyment standpoint, for me, since I'm more into, if I'm going to be into racing at all, it'd be more street racing than sort of the off-road trail kind of thing. I tend to like this type of racing better than what we get with Dirt Rally, even though Dirt Rally does um, look nicer. So sweet. Okay, so we got our item there. Save replay, etc., etc. View replay, create challenge, and so on. All right, so I would like to continue. That'll get me out of there. It's where continue makes you think you're going to the same thing again or something, like you're moving to the next thing, but it's actually just taking you back here. So we have our single events again: sprints, races, time trials, drift. I wonder how I fair in a race with this type of vehicle. Let's try... Where are we going to try? Hey, let's go to India. Meow, 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 meow. Ooh. And it really doesn't matter. Let's try Bandipur, India. Let's do random time of day, random cloud cut. Yeah, cloud cover is just cloudy, random, or clear. Like clear, da da da. Cloudy. Yeah, that doesn't make much of a difference to me. At least not in what we're seeing here. Um, probably when we're actually in the game itself. What kind of event settings can we do? Number of laps, number of opponents, difficulty of opponents, uh, corner flags on or off, and opponent vehicles. Um, whether they're in the same class or vehicle that I'm in. Let's do the same vehicle this time. Why not? And let's use Bumblebee again. Three thirty. And oh, that's three thirty at night. And it's clear. Not that we could tell because it's three thirty at night or in the morning. All right, make sure I got my feet on my pedals the way I want them here. All right. Okay. All right. Adjust. I do tend to sit a little bit closer than that. Oh, 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 okay, that's nice. That's nice right there. Okay, so I'm turning and looking. I can look... That's something else that you don't see with uh, Dirt VR. If you look backwards on Dirt VR, there is no rear. Like, the back of your car doesn't exist. It's just a chair, and then that's it. But I can look here. I can get somewhat detailed in here looking at, for instance, temperature controls and whatnot. I can read those numbers. They're just a little blurry. Okay. Nice. Speakers, sweet. And I can look behind me and either look between or look through the chair. Ugh. But I can see the full back seat has been modeled. Look out the rear. Look out the side. Rearview mirror, of course. Rearview mirror. I can stick my head. This is the cool part, or one of the cool parts to me. Um, but I can stick my head out the window like so and actually look down the side of the vehicle and look up 
onto the roof of the vehicle and around. That is awesome. That is much more attention to the detail of actually the environment you're in in the vehicle as opposed to just what you see as you drive um, than what we saw in Dirt VR. That is very cool. All right, so. All right, let's, uh, let's roll. Nighttime in India. And they are all way ahead of me. And getting grainier by the second. Wow, that's grainy. I guess grainy may not be the right word. Blurry? Everything's so blurry. The cars are all so big. My gas tank's almost empty. The audience is so fed up. Anyway. Oh, slow, slow, go! Bloody eighth or seventh or whatever it is. Seventh. Oh, shit! Okay. So I can skid out on this one. It's interesting. We're in the same vehicles, but it feels like their acceleration has... Well, not their acceleration, just their initial acceleration, I guess, was more, which is why they're a bit ahead of me. Okay. So I need to be more precise with my timing of when to start hitting the gas initially. I can do that. Oh, that is cool with the leaves on the ground and everything. Eat dirt, you twerp! I'm in fifth. Love the look on the inside. Look at that stuff. And a hand that keeps going to the gear shift. I do have it in automatic, but I mean, I could set it so that I have to use the paddles to switch, and the paddles are right there. And you can still switch manually if you're in automatic. Um, generally, it starts to redline just a little bit before it will automatically switch the gear. So it's a little bit uh, more beneficial to do it yourself. You hear that? Ding -ding! That was the beginning of the countdown telling me, you're off the road, jackass! We're gonna recenter your car! So, still in fifth. Ah! These guys are so close. Fourth. Uh, man, I'm trying to get around these guys. Get out of my way! Out of my way, out of my day! Out of your life and into mine! Into no one, into not one, into your step out of time. Okay! I right, thank you for helping me corner there, sir! Ya jerk! Oh, crap! Oh my goodness, did I just win this race? Is that possible? Go, 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 go! Damn it. And I'm gonna come in third, I think. Because I am in third now, and I don't see myself being able to catch up to both of these guys. I might, but I find it doubtful. I find it easier to drive when I'm not in first because then I can tell, I can sort of follow their motions and know sort of how things are going to go. Was that it? Nope. 
Am I still on lap three out of three? Really? Ah, there we go. Did I win the race? Holy crap! Huh! Did not see that coming. Nice. And braking assist, like I said, braking assist is enabled right now, so... Blink. Well, okay then. Ooh, level up. Yo, unlock BMW M235i. Okay. Now, if you cycle through, let's see, L1 and R1, that's the... Which one is that? Okay, that's the shifter, so yeah, there's, there you go. Paint jobs. And there's also accolade stickers and club badges that can pop up. Cool. Have to find my thumb position again. So yeah, so... Pretty nifty. Oh, nice. If I do a replay, I'm basically just in the passenger seat. I was curious about that. I can pause, resume, exit, restart, replay, hide the UI, cycle the camera with R1. Oh, that's cool. Huh. And it's just like, basically, I'm floating behind the car, directly behind the car as it drives. That's my... It's at their Facebook picture there with that Star Trek Discovery out on the corner, a Rogue One hat and a Vader shirt in my Star Wars office, which is very mixed messages. Nice. Instant replay, or restart replay, hide UI, cycle cameras, cycle competitors. And I can use, I think that's three up there to fast forward and whatnot, let's see. Yeah, so now I'm further along in the race. Nice. And the car models are nice looking. Again, not super, super crisp, but when you're in a mode like this, I'm not sure the crispness is really the issue as so much as it, it needs to be able to have the performance and not have frame rate issues and stuff like that. And in that case, that goes pretty well. So I'm going to try looking completely backwards and see if I see the other vehicles. Oh, okay, that's nice. Thinking of the other games where if you turn around, there's just nothing because it assumes you're never going to look behind you. What's up there, monkey dude? Whoa! Watch out for my legs, you jerkweed! And exit. All right, that's cool. You can save the replay. I choose to create a challenge. We do solo and club challenges. Based on my... Previous stuff. Nice. I think Black Hills Scotland was one that uh, they throw you in as the first one called Back in Black. Jump back out of here. So, okay. So that said, um, I got to say that I did not expect myself to enjoy this game as much as I do. Um, this is a game that initially I was like, yeah, screw it. No way am I paying full price for this. But that was based on playing the demo on the PSVR demo disc, which does not do the game justice, I will say. Um, it is not, again, visually it's not up to the level of like a Dirt Rally VR, but at the same time it is more visually impressive. And it may be because I'm on a PS4 Pro, I'll have to see. Um, but it is a little bit more visually impressive than what the PC, uh, PSVR demo disc made it look like. Um, I do enjoy this type of racing more. Um, the car models are nice. Again, just not super crisp. But uh, yeah, for $20, this is a fantastic experience, I think. And um, for 30 bucks, that was a great thing, jumping in and getting the, uh, the wheel. Now, would I have paid full price for this and full price for the wheel at $100? Hell no. But pretty fun here. Um, and as I, as I say, anytime I'm playing a racing game, especially if there's a wheel, my Uncle Dave, who's way more into racing than I have ever been, would probably really dig this. Um, and that, for me, is sort of the barometer. If he would dig it, it's worth the buy. If I don't think he'd dig it, then probably not. But I think this falls under the, yeah, he probably would dig it. And that is a, that is a very good thing. So, in any event, this has been Drive Club VR, played on a PS4 Pro with a Thrustmaster T80 non-force feedback racing wheel that does come with the uh the brake and gas pedals but not 
a clutch. Um, feel free to leave any comments, leave any questions. If there's something you want to see me jump into to see if there's something else that you haven't had a chance to see here that you would like to see to help you make the decision on whether this is a good pickup for you personally. Um, but for me, I think I am out of here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll be back with more PlayStation VR Let's Plays as time and new games permit. Thanks.